course, it's what's standing between you and a closer relationship with those who matter most. Learn if loneliness has taken a leading role in your life. That's next on Studio 5. Welcome back here on Studio 5. We often think that feelings of isolation happen when we're alone, but surprisingly, the research suggests the exact opposite, that loneliness can occur frequently when we are in those relationships. Now, in an effort to help build more meaningful connections, we pose this question to our next guest. Are we lonely in our relationships, and what can we do about it? So joining me right now is Kristen Hodson, a licensed clinical social worker and a therapist. Thank you for, for having come me. in. I mean, I, this is an interesting topic, and I yeah. want you to lay out kind of the groundwork for this. What does this okay. mean, lonely in a relationship? Well, I think we think of loneliness as for all the people that aren't in a relationship, mm -hmm. they're not married, and then once we get married or we get into a relationship, it solves the problem. And while that might make it so that we're not alone, mm -hmm. we can experience loneliness because we can be surrounded by people and not feel connected. And I think at the floor and the root of this is feeling connected to the people that you love the most. And so when you feel disconnected, mm -hmm. then we can start to feel lonely. And in this age of technology, again, we can be surrounded by people and feel very alone, or we can be in a room with a lot of people and feel very alone. So what shows up in the research is that we actually can feel a lot of loneliness in our in our marriages. That's kind of, that's really sad to think about, though. I mean, when you think about the social aspect, you can have a million friends on on Facebook and yes. Instagram, but walk into a room and not really know anybody. No, that's, and not feel connected. Sad. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about some of the ways that um, you can identify if you're feeling this way in a relationship. Yeah. Or some of the, the cycles we go through. Well, some of, some of the strategies is we can get into this cycle in our marriage. Uh, we start to it. Loneliness doesn't just typically show up. It starts to happen Creeps over in. time. And we hit these little roadblocks and we start to put up walls. And little by little, we get into the cycle of disconnection. And then we can get into the cycle with our spouse. And we're kind of waiting for them to break the cycle. And before we know it, we're in a cycle of disconnection. And so we want to stop the cycle and step in and be like, how do I reconnect with you? How do I get show interest in something you're interested in. Maybe you're watching a show and instead of going to separate rooms, we go and start to watch a show mm -hmm. together or we start to read the same book. And we may need to be the one to break the cycle. cycle. Yes, instead of waiting for our partner and to break it. And that could be intimidating. That could be Absolutely. hard to do. Absolutely. So you gotta be brave. That's right. <laughs> step in there. That's right. Okay, the second thing, focus on the friendship. Yes, so researcher John Gottman talks about that when we are investing into our friendship, that creates the stability that we need for marriage. And so when we look at the ways that we invest into our friends, we're often looking at how they're doing bids for connection and we, we respond. Mm -hmm. We accept the compliment, we give compliments, we're hanging out, we're laughing, we're doing all doing these the fun things. things. you do with your friends. Yes, and what can happen in marriage is we start to not invest in the friendship of being interested in your every single day. Right. And so if we can start to focus on the friendship, which is usually there at the beginning of our relationships, we can restore some of that connection. I feel like sometimes we get into the roles of uh, mom or wife and we just go on those paths and forget yes. the connection that we need Yes, that be, that started it all. It's, really. not a, it's not enough just to coordinate tasks and logistics and of life. <laughs> yeah, we need yes. that connection. Okay, you have a couple examples for us. Of the, so, so it would be ways that we can reinvest would be little touch, okay. laughing, um, asking like, when I think about loneliness, we can't just be like, well, I want to feel more connected. You got to, you got to do something to feel more. You got to say, well, what kind of connection do I need? I actually would love more support around the home. I need to talk with you about my day. I want to talk to you about what happened at work. I would love more physical touch. Mm -hmm. I would love you like identifying the kind of connection you need and claiming that is hugely important. Right. Because if you're needing quality time and you're getting physical touch, still not going to solve that problem. Right. Because so we really not need to claim that connection. Need. Yes. Ah, I like that. Okay. Well, another thing we talk about here is the, the shift, the perspective from me uh -huh. to we. Explain that. So one of the most empowering places we can get to is how can I change and get the relationship that I want? Because we can't control our partner. Right. We can spend all day telling them what they need to do to make the relationship better, but we can't. And so if we look at it and go, uh, how can I make this better? What kind of relationship do I want and start acting in that way? We can start to make some shifts and really when we change me, we change we. So when we show up differently, our spouses have to respond differently 
and it can shift. But how do you get over the fact that, uh, you know, the, the strong will, well, I shouldn't have to change in this relationship. That's right. How do you get past that? That can be tricky, and that's where sometimes counseling, if we go back to the cycle and mm -hmm. the intimidation of having these conversations, if they're continually turning into a fight or if it just isn't getting anywhere, bringing in the support of a trained marriage therapist mm -hmm. can really help start to break these cycles and create new connections and upward uh, momentum around positivity. Absolutely. Okay. I so much kind of, I feel like we can all just do a little bit better or a little bit more, and we just need to identify what yeah. that is in that relationship. One little change can One little make thing. a difference. One little mm -hmm. thing. Okay, where can we find you for more information? If you go to thehealinggroup.com, okay. you'll find different, that's where you can get counseling, but different ideas and blog posts. Oh, thank you so much for your insight, Kristen. A lot of good information there. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right.